Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Modest Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Heart of Dixie by Tammy Hogue. Now, this does have um, a, a friend of the main character who has died by suicide before the book starts. It's also got some um, some mild body stuff, which is generally handled pretty healthily for a book of its age, but just keep an eye out. It's also got like that plot where the dude tells a lie at the beginning and you're waiting for it to come out. So that's the thing. There's also portion endangerment. There is also geographical abnormalities that are going to like make you break out in hives if you are from the South. And there's also some just random bald cousin who is running hell all throughout the South Carolina <laughs> low country. One minute, she's in Myrtle Beach. The next minute, she's in Beaufort. The next minute, she is down in Charleston, all trying to get her hair situation sorted out. I found that to be a plus and, in fact, very realistic. I don't know, man. It's also got the dumbest man this side of the Mississippi. There's a bunch of dumb men because like, the, 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 the bald cousin <laughs> is running from another That's dumb man. That's true. It's just populated by stupid fucking men. Oh. So, I mean, I, if that like bothers you, then maybe this one ain't for you. <laughs> but otherwise, this was actually like a, a really fun book. It's a lighthearted book. Yeah, so and was... so don't, don't, don't take any of that too, too hard. To yeah. art, to, too ha- heart. Don't, don't take it too heart of Dixie. Yeah. And there is also the name Dixie. Yeah. Yeah, well. Thanks. Well, I have an Aunt Dixie. I, everybody got Aunt Dixie. I know, you know, like. Can't... Is that her real name? Her her government name? <laughs> her wallet so. name? It's like the only name, like, you know, in my uncle's, like, obituary. It just said Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> she don't have another name. She's just Dixie. So, I'm... They thought I was lying at work uh, because, you know, you had to produce the obituary uh, if, if you want time off, like, for, like, bereavement leave. leave and, um. Um, uh, so all they could find was um, Gloria. Like, well, I mean, like, I never called this woman Gloria in my life. I wasn't even sure her name was Gloria. It's Annette. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think for a minute there, I had to, like, set the record straight when I got back to work. Yeah. It's like that. It is. But, yeah, uh, this is a pretty fun little book. Um, I I actually, uh, I found it in uh, a little free library on my street. Yeah. So somebody in my neighborhood is a delightful old lady, and I don't know who it is. I know we need to find her. I know. Find her. Put up um, wanted signs, like like yes. like I got a lost cat, but instead I got a lost old lady. Who's reading Heart of Dixie? Oh. <laughs> so hey y'all, hey y'all. I feel like we've been. It's been a minute, but I don't. Know. It has. We're, we've been getting our shit together. We're trying. Yeah. I mean, okay, like, sort of. Yeah. Like <laughs> we don't have it together yet, but you know, thank you guys for still listening and bearing with us, and we promise that we're going to get back to two a month. Yeah, we got some good stuff planned. We um, got some. We got. We got some plans. We got some irons in the fire. Yes. So what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Rare Earth because I saw the name and I was like, all right, let's get some '60s psychedelic funk band to go with our. 1980s, early 90s, Southern Heart of Dixie book. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't match at all, but you know what? I saw the name and I was like, all right. Yes. Please. Thank you for giving me wine. No problem. <laughs> um, yeah. So tell us about Tammy Hogue. I-, I assume it's Hogue. It can't be Hogue, right? I don't. So Tammy Hogue, who is only 63. I feel like I've heard her name all my life, so I feel like she should be 140. I know, right? Um, she is best known for her work in romance and thriller genres, has more than 22 million copies of her books in print. So she grew up in Iowa, which is clear because she doesn't understand how the ocean works. (laughs) Um, (laughs) she always knew that she was going to be a writer. Her first job after graduating was at the La Crosse Tribune in the circulation department. Oh, before publishing her first novel, she also worked as a photographer's assistant. She trained show horses and sold designer bathroom. Herself. Another one of them. They're, they're always horse girls. She's kind of fun, though. Like, yeah. I mean, she's selling bathroom stuff. <laughs> like, she's a jack of all trades. All right, so she began her career in 1988 when she was started writing for um, Love Swept. And after several years of success, she switched her focus to, like, single title suspense novels. Now, this one, I swear we're going to have to read. Her novel Night Sins became a TV miniseries, and it starred Valerie Bertinelli and Harry Hamlin, um, which, you know, that is amazing. And she, Hogue and three other authors who made the leap from romance to thrillers at roughly the same time were Eileen Dreyer, Elizabeth Grayson, and Kimberly Cates have formed a group they called the Divas. Oh. 
They provide support and encouragement for each other. And she often thanks them in the acknowledgement section of her books. Oh, I bet they get frosted tips together. I bet so. So, <laughs> Fanny Hogue, um, this one was super fun. Yeah, it really was fun. Um, so, we have a more modern cover. This is originally a 1991 Love Swept. And the cover we have is one of those boring ones. It's just got like the little tiny picture of a fucking beach with one of them beach fence damn things on it. The original Love Swept, though, it's not a good cover. Like, usually they're awesome covers. But what it looks like is like a 14 year old girl who like got into her mom's makeup and she's being embraced by Michael Fassbender like when he was doing that Peter O'Toole thing for that alien movie um Prometheus yes which is I not- saw it on my birthday and we had gone out prior to and I had had too much wine and I was so excited because I like I think in my head I was like oh it's gonna be like alien <laughs> it's gonna be like alien and I got so bored I I fell asleep in the movie. <laughs> like everybody had to wake me up after. I was well, like, he was good. Like he was really good at it. All of his parts were great. Yeah, so boring. No, he's great. Uh, the rest of it, yeah, mm, I don't know. Anyway, yes, he's got bad hair and the cover, and the new cover looks kind of like one of those Nora Roberts deals. Yeah, it's just it's it's not great either. So this this book deserves to be reissued with like a fantabulous yes cover, but they don't do that. They never reissue them better. They never improve. No. So anyway, let me read you the uh, the back. Oh, this bad boy. Number one, New York Times bestselling author Temi Hogue mixes mystery and romance in this moving classic, not really, it's a love swept, of a missing woman and the search that begins together. Where's the the mystery? (laughs) There's no mystery. Mystery is how this guy doesn't realize what is happening. That's the mystery because it's the most obvious thing in the world. I don't understand. Uh, The mix is mystery. The mystery, like, the mystery maybe is the bald girl running around all over, like, the the South. She doesn't want to be seen by anybody. But she is full on running all over the place with a wig on. And it, it's wild. The other mystery, maybe, is again, she doesn't understand how South Carolina coastal roads work. No. But there's no other mystery. <laughs> all right, continue. Well, I mean, you're like, what are you like, what, what are you even talking about? Trust me. I know you haven't read this book. You have read books, though, and you are going to know what happens in this book by the first like 30 seconds of me telling you what oh, happens. Oh, exactly. And in fact, you're going to know what happens by the time I get done reading this cover. Yes. So let me finish doing that. The moving classic novel of a missing woman and the search that brings together the unlikeliest of lovers. They're not unlikely at all. This is the two men, like people in this fucking book. That's the most likely thing. Have these people never read a romance novel? Anyway, she was a blonde goddess, a box office megastar. She had one TV show. It was on a TV show. I, I would think it would be, I'm thinking like Stephanie Zimbalist, you know, like like that kind of level of fame. <laughs> like you might think you saw her in the mall, but you wouldn't be sure. I was feeling like Cynthia Gibb. Okay, yeah, but I mean, like not somebody. We are not talking Tom Cruise levels of fame here. All right, no. all right. So every woman wanted to be here. Every man wanted to bet her. But over a year ago, Devin Stafford vanished without a trace. As a biographer, this is the second book I've read in like a month that had the profession of biographer in it, by the way. (laughs) The other was Ghost Story. And you know what? It sucked. It was boring. Jake Gannon had taught himself to follow the clues of a person's life story like a detective. Really? He's like Kitty Kelly. Whatever. As an ex-Marine, he was accustomed to being firmly in control. Anyway, they don't say ex-Marine. They say former Marine. Anyway. But when his car died in a little town called Mayor's Nest on the Carolina coast, which they also don't say, by the way, there's two Carolinas, dickbag, he had to admit he'd come to a dead end. There he met a 38 tow truck driver named Dixie LaFontaine. She was no celebrity, but Dixie had an irresistible sex appeal all her own. What did this down-to-earth woman know about a missing movie star? Surprisingly, quite a lot. And Jake was going to uncover it all if Dixie didn't end up shooting him first. All right, so you know, like, the twist, right? (laughs) Surprise, everybody. But Jake don't, because Jake goes to his, like, class reunions for high school, and he, like, walks in the wrong room, stays there three hours, doesn't know the difference. I think Jake's got face blindness. I got face blindness, and he is stupid. Well, you just wear glasses. No, I also, I can't, (laughs) I don't look at people in the face, so, like, if I'm trying to help somebody at the library and I have to go lead them to get them a book, I'm like... Blue shirt, white hat, blue shirt, white hat, blue shirt, white hat until I see them again. All right. But this man sits next to Clark Kent in the newsroom and doesn't understand why he gets so many fucking smoke breaks. This man is stupid. Anyway. So. (laughs) 
I'm uh, sorry. He just got dumber throughout the course of the damn thing. So the book starts with Jake driving. This is where we're going to talk about geography. <laughs> Jake is driving just north of Charleston. and the, the On the highway. On the highway, which would be 17. Uh, only way it could be. Only way. It's only it way. ain't 95. No. It's, <laughs> it's 17, and the ocean is right next to him. Yeah, he can watch it on the right side of his, uh, you know, off the of the porch with the, with the top down. Yeah. And we're like, for those of us who live... Who have yeah. ever been within three states of South Carolina? We can tell you what you're going to find on Highway 17 just north of Charleston. Paper mill? Paper mill. Porn store? Pawn shop. Uh, store where you can buy a Corona bikini and I get a hermit crab for free? You're not seeing the ocean, though. No, you are not seeing the ocean. That You might see some a little bit of salt marsh. Yeah. But especially because he's in the middle of nowhere. But maybe Jake's so stupid that he doesn't realize that Marsh is not ocean. Maybe he thought that that paper mill, that that was the smell of the sea. Could be. It could be that. <laughs> so he is hot on the trail of Devin Stratford. Stratford. Who doesn't, doesn't matter? <laughs> he was a, yeah, this is back, you know, this is back when network TV was gold. So, you know, Devin was like, she was a TV actress. She had a show called Something Wild or something. It doesn't matter. Not Something Wild, the movie, which is a great movie. Wild Style? No, that's the Lego girl and the... It's something like that. Wild Time. Wild Time. And the time with the... I don't know. One of those words has a Y in it. We're anyway, no for our younger listeners who are none, but anyway, if you are a younger listener, this was back when you didn't have all the things and network <laughs> TV was huge. And in fact, like these network stars... Were so huge that we used to pit them against each other. It was amazing. (laughs) And a gladiatorial battle. And a gladiatorial battle (laughs) every year at Pepperdine University um, with the Battle of the Network Stars. So Devin for sure would have been put in the dunk tank. Mm. Like they would have, they love a girl screaming. Yeah. Dunk tank. Dunk tank in a bitch is what they love to do on the Battle of Network. And okay, so you used to get a lot more famous on network TV because there was really nothing else to do. So, yeah. like on a night where you didn't have anything that you wanted to watch, you just watched something else. Yeah. Yeah, you just totally did. So, like, and, and you just watched the thing that was in front of the thing that you wanted to watch or the thing that was after the thing you wanted to watch. So, people like Tom Stalick, for example, got super, super fucking famous on TV. He was also, you know, just to bring it back up, he was really good on Battle of the Network I was going to say, he didn't he do bo- volleyball? Like, he was... Well, he used to... He was a football player, but it was always... The, he was always my favorite thing to watch on the Battle of the Network Stars because what they would do is they'd have a tandem bicycle race and they'd always put tall-ass Tom Selleck on the front of the bike and then put some tiny bitch on the bike with him. <laughs> and, like, her little legs would just be trying to keep up, trying to keep up. They knew never to put him on the inflatable kayak race. That's not for him. That's where you've got, like, you know, Telly Savant or something and, oh that was the other thing they'd always have captains and the captains were always great it was always like telly savalas for like abc and um ed asner for nbc you know hey kids things used to come out on networks and i don't just mean like hbo <laughs> like they like, actually like there, there was like a whole ecosystem and then like cbs was always, like there was always one that sucked <laughs> like every year and it was always like their coach or their their, their team captain was like willie geist or something you know um but, like, the ringer was always, like, the young kids that were always really good at it was, um, oh, God, Nancy McKeon was amazing. It was always, like, the, I don't remember this depth of. <laughs> oh, I was, like, if it's <laughs> on, I will watch it. But, like, all the women that were, like, young teenage girls that, you know, would later grow up and finally, you know, come out and be, you know, proud lesbians were always the ones, like, <laughs> killing it in the, like, the the obstacle course. Like, it's just not fair. It's sort of like how on Dancing with the Stars, it is not fair that they let people who are athletes be on that and then, like, let some, like, <laughs> septuagenarian who used to be in All My Children be on that. I mean, it's not, like, some of these people are just like, going to be much better at, like, doing things with their bodies. <laughs> well, that's why they always put them as, like, the, they always end up being the, the captain. <laughs> but it was always, like, it was hosted by Howard Cosell, or, and then, like, they'd have somebody really random, like, um... Harry Belafonte's daughter was always like the co-host, you know. So anyway, yeah, y'all are just furiously googling right now. I hope so. No, y'all know. turned it off. Is what happened. So anyway, she's that person, um, Devin, and yeah. she's like she's got sparkling green eyes and long blonde waves, and she's sylph like and all these words that mean skinny. Okay, yeah. she's super fucking skinny, and so he is gonna find her because she vanished, like not vanished, like missing person, like she took her stuff in a suitcase and left. Yeah. And so he's decided that he needs to get in her fucking business. 
<laughs> well, the thing is, it's like it's not just him randomly. Like people keep talking about it. Like, like on Inside Edition, they're yeah. all like, "What happened to Devin? Like why? Don't you have like a real news story?" There really was very little to do. It's not edition doesn't have a real news story. What are you talking about? <laughs> so <laughs> after all that, Jake is a biographer, but he's evidently a rich enough, he's good enough at being a biographer. He claims he's no Kitty Kelly, but he has a Porsche and like is incredibly wealthy in California, but he's like a good biographer. So he doesn't want to like get into her trashy secrets. He just wants with her consent to tell her story. Okay. So he's got this, like he's got his Porsche and he's got this like giant, like, um, this is important <laughs> banker's box of material that he's already done his research with and he's headed to where he knows that she's sort of from and he's going to be asking around in these little towns uh which he has no idea i mean like oh my god would anybody ever talk to this dude in anywhere we figure he has to be because he's in the middle of nowhere on the carolina coast and we're going to ignore that ocean part he has to be in like the francis marion national forest <laughs> i guess so i guess this is like right around like right around the beaufort area i don't it's know it's gotta be far no it's, it's north of charleston i know but like where he ends up again like he's north of charleston yes i know i understand how north works but what i'm saying <laughs> is, is like there's nothing around there so like the next city and like where they go later is off the coast of beaufort so i'm guessing that they're like beaufort or below um maybe he's too dumb to know where north is maybe that's I mean, quite possible who the fuck knows I, so anyway it doesn't really matter I mean, they could be anywhere they just wanted to make it like a sense of place whatever but they kind of miss on that because this ocean business anyway he breaks down and there's nobody the car breaks down the car breaks him down. he doesn't Not have him. like an emotional well no he does then because he calls um and uh with his uh car phone yeah. Very sexy. Uh, and he calls a tow truck driver, and it's a lady, and then he breaks down. <laughs> His la- yeah, the lady tow truck driver. She shows up, and she's cute and sassy, and, you know... He appreciates that she's cute and sassy, but also it's a lady about to touch his Porsche. Mm-hmm. Um, with a tow truck. <gasps> I mean, I do kind of get it, because... Not a lady, but, like, if I had a Porsche and I had to call some podunk place and, like... Rural South Carolina. Oh, well, shit. Yeah. You know well, what the I mean? The thing is, though, he broke out. I mean, like, he fucked it up. Well, he did fuck it up. Like, I mean, <laughs> I bet he just didn't, like, fucking oil, change the oil or something, you mm-hmm. know? So... Her name is Dixie, Dixie LaFontaine. Dixie LaFontaine. And he's like, oh, well, Devin had some LaFontaine relatives. Maybe, maybe this is fertile ground for my biography. Yeah. So Dixie (laughs) is, um, she's obviously just like tiny. She's like tiny, like short. And then she's like a little bit curvy. And she does brown hair and I guess brown eyes. Yeah, she's got like a little bob and like. Yeah, because they talk about her shorter brown hair. Yeah, yeah. She's um, got like I don't even think it's a bob. I think it's like the like a softball coach kind of look. Oh God. <laughs> because uh, she has for reasons cut it off recently. Now I know you're thinking like this book can't possibly think I'm this stupid, right? That is obviously <laughs> Devin. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You we know it's Devin from the jump that she is, you know Law of Economy of Characters. <laughs> Right. So, you know, they have like a little meet cute and it is kind of funny because she's like going to put the car on the thing and he like has like a, he's like, I've seen those, I've seen the the TV. I know what happened. So he like jumps on the hood of the car and he's like, no. And he's like, oh God, I'm such an ass. Like, it's cute. Like, they're very cute. They're riding in, you know, her tow truck and and he's just like, he's California and this is 1991. So he's like... Ew. Yeah, they go to a restaurant and, you know, she orders just like a sandwich. Like and, a club sandwich. And he's like, I'll have a sandwich, hold everything but the lettuce and like the turkey. Um, so he's just like eating a lettuce wrap. And, and OK, the one thing I don't like about him is he he does talk about not just his food, but other people's food. Because he's like, you got that with white bread. You know, white bread is full of cancer. And she can't even eat her fucking club sandwich, which I bet was delicious. Yeah. I, well, yeah. And, oh, you know, we'll kind of dive into it a little bit. Yeah. So he does that kind of thing a lot. And he's like, just he's a haircut. OK, the man's just a haircut. I didn't hate him as much as you did. I didn't but. hate him. I just like I felt sorry for him that he's allowed up by himself. <laughs> I don't have the same. I thought it was like they're really playful and fun together. So, you know, he's she just she's starting to shoot him. <laughs> I, yeah, she does threaten to shoot him. I felt like it was supposed to be very like you know New York City kind of thing, <laughs> yeah, where yeah. it's like he's a fish out of water. And they have like the uh, uh, you know like th- this kind of thing usually annoys me in books where it's like the cute little small town where everybody goes down and watches Wheel of Fortune. But I don't know, it was cute. I, I liked yeah. it. I, I, I usually Every, do yeah, not like this. It's but one of those towns. Everybody knows each other. The mechanic, the head mechanic, is not going to be back for a week because you know he's 
up near Myrtle Beach, like at a wedding or something. Um, and then, possibly down near Myrtle Beach. Who knows? We don't know. He could be anywhere. <laughs> um, they could be in Wilmington for all the fuck. Like, <laughs> but they could be in Missouri. That's the Mississippi he's been seeing us. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, it's a real small town. Everybody knows each other. And, you know, sh- while they're at this diner, he starts talking about this De- this Devin, e- you know, whatever. It comes on Entertainment Tonight or whatever. <laughs> uh, and everybody, like, clams up real hard. Yeah. He's, like, well, this yeah, he's talking about how up. she's the most perfect woman. And other, guy- other guys are like, oh, yeah, she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, he's like, well, where can I stay? You know, is there a hotel? And she's like, well, I've got these cottages. And you find out she runs the cottage. And where the fuck are the other tourists? This is a beach town. It is pristine. It, it, well, like it, maybe this is actually just like a like a sanatorium for tuberculosis patients. It still, like I don't know. You know what it is? I bet it's that island with the monkeys on it off, off of Charleston. <laughs> they, okay, so y'all, there's a island. There's a monkey island <laughs> where like they let these research monkeys go, and yeah. now it's just full and they're protected, and they probably have some kind of like because they were research monkeys. They have like terrible diseases yeah, or whatever. Yeah, monkey island. Yeah, nobody's allowed out there. But we like, got a lot of islands. Island. There's Goat Island. There's Monkey Island. Bull Island. There's a lot of animals involved. Yeah. Bull Island is awesome. But anyway, we, we're getting... Goat Island and Merle's Inlet. Mm. It might be a peninsula, but I think it's an island. <laughs> Shit fire. <Okay. laughs> this, is, this is going south in a hurry. <laughs> or north or possibly <laughs> west. We don't know where the fuck we are. <laughs> this is going up 17. Anyway, so he has to stay at this the the cottages that she runs. There's like a main house and then there's these little guest cottages. It's not her house. Like She's just living high on the hog on everybody else's money, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And, and, but there's a mysterious somebody upstairs in the house that he's seen, like, like lights, and he's like, mm-hmm, maybe that's where the mysterious Devin is. He sees the is. silhouette of a woman with long hair. And he's <laughs> like, oh, that's her. She's hiding in this attic. Uh-huh. I found I've cracked the code. Yeah, it's very Jane Eyre. Like, she must be, like, fair the fucking Rochester. Yeah, so... <laughs> You know, His whole plan is to get close to Dixie while trying to pump her for information about Devin. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, you know... It, they have like all these little interactions that are he tries to get her to go running but unlike that girl in that book we read last time she's like no fuck you i'm gonna walk yeah you can either walk or not walk but i'm walking yeah go Devin. you know through their interactions she talks a lot about because he brings up Devin all the time she talks about the pressure of like you know having to be this perfect you know because like she's like you talked about how this is like your perfect version of a woman and like it's a lot of like you know the kind of pressures to be perfect and also like the pressure that it puts on other people like so you know like talking about like that hot that whole hollywood idolized standard of beauty um so there's you know they're having those kind of conversations but also like little cute like but he's trying to get into the house and she's not there to find to talk to to see what's in the attic so they have like a makeout session and she's like he's gonna come back we're gonna fuck yeah gonna fuck and he's all like um, I'm going to get a ladder and I'm going to see if I can get up. Well, he does like her. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. likes her for sure. But uh, he's, he's going to some sneaky. He around. tries to cat burgle her attic. And then, OK, so she also is the kind of person who has all these like reject dogs. Like, you know, <laughs> she's got stray animals. Yeah. But she like, does, the kind like, with, I will like, say, Tammy does give him good. Like, so like good Southern animal names. There's a dog just named Bob Dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. That's all legit. Well, they they go and. <laughs> They, they they screwed the pooch like uh, like so he's like hanging off the fucking um, windowsill. Uh, yeah, he's on the ladder and like the dogs come and knock the ladder over and he's like. Ugh. And so he has like, to come up with a story that's not like I was trying to break into your house because I didn't actually know that you were home uh, because I wanted to like to to spy on the woman who's in the attic who I think is a TV star. <laughs> anyway, like a so television he's, actress. So I mean, I, I guess he's not that dumb because he fools her. I mean, she should be real embarrassed about that. Shit. <laughs> I was not since Connie Selica has a woman beguiled me this much. Like she, like he, he tells her that he was trying to like sneak in and surprise her. Like yeah. what? What? What the fuck? And so they bang it out, and it's yes. hot. It is hot. But he sees a tattoo, so now it finally clicks for this man. <laughs> like seriously, I am not kidding when I say that. Like you know, if his wife comes home with a new haircut, he's going to call the cops for trespassing because he has not figured it out until he sees this tattoo that that's Devin, and then he's like, "Oh shit, uh, I gotta hide this." 
Yeah, and then she's like, "What? What's wrong?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing." And then they bang it out, and it's it, yeah, it's very hot. And so the rest of the book is like, "All right, when's it gonna? When's the other?" Because he's like, "Well, I love her, and I'm gonna wait until she trusts me to tell me." Because he does. He he drops the L bomb first. He tells her that he loves her, and she talks about having these trust issues. Yeah, like, and and um, you know, she had a, a dear friend who had um, died by suicide, like in Hollywood. Although she doesn't say in Hollywood, so she's like crying in bed, and he's like, "Oh shit." You know, so he has like truly hoist himself in his own petard at this point. He finds out that who is in the attic is her cousin, her bald cousin, her cousin that her the cousin's boyfriend loved this Devin bitch so much that she he's like, well, you look like her. If you just bleached your hair more, then you'd look exactly like her. So she went, you know, and she went to one of those places, I'm sure, where it's like. She must have done it herself. No, like, she did it herself. No, yeah, like she. You had to have a license for cosmetology. Okay, she yeah. over bleached her hair, and all of her hair fell out, like at the root. So, like, she's got a buzz cut, basically, and she is now hiding. This is the cousin. She is now hiding from her boyfriend because she doesn't want him to see her bald. Yeah, and like every time like, this cousin, she's never really hiding because she's never in that house. But that one time, they'll be like, "Oh, where's your cousin De- Delia?" Is her name? Where's Delia? She's like, "Oh, she went down to Charleston to see if they could do something about her bald head." Or like, where's Delia? <laughs> oh, she went to Myrtle Beach to go find a new wig. You know, it's uh, just also that he's trying to, to to catch her and he can never catch her. Yeah, like something always happens to. So he finds all this out. So now he knows everything and he doesn't know how to uh fix the problem that he has created for himself yes and they go on this like romantic boat ride to little horse island which is actually a private island you can't just go to it all islands are private islands yeah but i mean like yeah they're very like just just going (laughs) when they first talked about it again i thought they were up in like the outer banks because the public horse island is in the outer banks well, I mean, don't believe any of this is just real. I mean, this is just a thing she made up. Well, I mean, there is a island horse island. Like. There is a horse yeah, island. Yeah, well, she didn't know that. <laughs> there's a little horse island where there's wild horses. I guarantee you she it. has no idea. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so they she go She wouldn't this... know, like, a barrier island. She wouldn't know a maritime forest if it came up and bit her on the butt. So, um... <sighs> Dixie's best friend is this woman named Sybil. And Sybil's like, you need to tell him. And she's like, I will. I will do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, mm-hmm. and I get it because she's like, well, I don't. I want him to be in love with me and not. And, this and she's got of me. a lot of trauma like packed up in that. Yeah, she quit. Like, we find out that the reason that she left Hollywood is that between this, she quit smoking and gained twelve pounds, which is a very real thing. No, oh, yeah, and um, that the people who were like. <laughs> Not only the like the executives on the show, but also like her agent were like, "Bitch, you got to lose that twelve pounds. I don't mm-hmm. care what you have to do." And she like, I think it was kind of like this eye opening moment where she's like, "I've been starving myself." Yeah, like she had a serious like uh, eating issue. issue. Yeah, I, I, I guess they didn't. We probably should put them the trigger warnings. They didn't like. She didn't make it clear there was an eating disorder, but she was eating in a disordered way. For yes, sure. you know, because she talks about her unhealthy habits of like mm-hmm. not eating and you know going to the gym and calls her face like her her movie star face like skeletal. Mm-hmm. Um, that, yeah. yeah, and then like getting the tans and like she wore contacts and she had these hair extensions yeah. and it was all this whole thing and she was and and I think also like her friend's suicide was a big part of. Yeah, because her friend didn't make it in Hollywood, and like nobody saw her friend at all as a person. And yeah, yeah. So the whole thing, like, so and that, that's so. But it was the cigarette thing that put her over the ma- over the top because she quit smoking, and then they treat her like shit for it. Yeah. So she up and left. Like that's why. So she's got a lot of issues about the way that she's perceived and about yeah. like not trusting people who 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 say things that are too nice about her because obviously she's learned that those people can't necessarily be trusted. Yeah. And again, it's got this like very much you know talking about the Hollywood idealized standard of beauty and stuff so it, it comes to like where you're like all right here we go we gotta- when's it gonna happen and this is kind of tough on a character because like um if the plot is like this that means that at some point a person whether you like them or not is going to have to like just look like an asshole yeah you know like i, I don't know if you read spoiler alert it's, it's it's one of those that um and this is it's not a spoiler it, you, you know in the very beginning that um, somebody is keeping a big secret that is a huge betrayal of trust. And of course, it's going to come out at some point. Yeah. So like, it's got to be a pretty good author to make you not hate him after, you know. Yeah. Um, and so he's at, she's come over to his cottage 
And she's also like a little handy person. And, you know, something has broken and she's trying to fix it. And she knocks down his banker box mm-hmm. that was in the Porsche. And she sees all of the Devon Stadford files. And it frankly looks a little serial killer, I'm sure. Yeah. You know? And then, yeah, because she knows he's a writer, but he's a mystery. Like, you know, he comes. Oh, yeah, he lies and says he's a mystery author. Yeah. Yeah. He, she, he comes out of the shower. She's just like, I found just stuff. And, you know, gives him the business. And then she's like, she's she runs off and she's just going to get in a boat during a like a hurricane a hurricane yeah. and then her other she's got this one other tenant named fabiana who's like a greek god <laughs> he comes out and he's like what is problem you know i don't know why i'm giving him this accent <laughs> because they don't they say they don't like he's got a wild accent it's part like norwegian part greek or something and She's running down the dock and it's going to jump in her boat on the sea, I guess. But Yeah. Where the fuck is this? You don't. This is not. You don't just have what, a. This is like what. You, you don't, don't have, have a, a dock on the here. <laughs> like, I mean, what is this like? Yeah. So she's going to jump into the boat and like just drive off into the storm. And she's got Fabiano chasing her and she's got Jake chasing her. And she's holding a cat. Dude. She's holding like a one eyed cat. <laughs> one eyed cat. She's holding Cyclops, the one eyed cat. But she comes to her and like, oh my god that would have been dumb so like thankfully she does not have to be stopped from getting in this boat she's like oh, man that would have been stupid yeah fabiano oh, and yeah. jake have a little little tussle and then they end up becoming best friends so she ends up going to watch wheel of fortune at the town bar and you know she's just hanging out there and while she's hanging out jake and fabiano are drinking beer and they come up with a plan to win her back um fabiano is an artist yes he comes like he goes off to Europe in fabulous locations for six months, and then he comes to butt fuck wherever <laughs> Monkey Island, <laughs> Monkey Island, South Carolina. It can't be good because it's otherwise, and it would be full of tourists. So it must be on like the runoff pipe from the paper mill. It has got to be where this place it's is bizarre. So, like, <laughs> they come up with this. Like, he writes a book about a princess. Where he basically is like, I know your story and I love you and blah, blah, blah. It's very sweet. It is very sweet. It's very sweet. And he, you know, when she comes home, he gives her the book and, you know, tells her that he doesn't care about the story anymore. That all he, like, it was never about the story that he just wants to live in Mayor's Nest with her and do whatever she wants to do. And that he loves her and wants to have happily ever after with her because she's a princess and he loves her no matter what. And she says yes. Yeah. And it's very sweet. Yes. So, <laughs> question time. Okay. This book, I, honestly, I, I, I had low expectations for a book with the word Dixie in the title um, that I found in the little free library, which, you know, is usually full of like, like three medical journals, a programming book from 2003, and some pretty decent kids books, yes. right? <laughs> but no, no, this was, this was fun. So uh, Big Dick Energy or Big Dick Energy? I think we're going to deviate on this one because I, I, I mean... Aside from him just being dumb, but I feel like it was supposed to be dumb. I liked him. Yeah, I, I liked like, him. I liked right. it a lot. Because, like, I mean, I, the thing that is wild is, like, let's say that this woman topped out at, like, gaining 30 pounds. Yeah. They acted like she ate a whole other person, <laughs> like, in, in her unrecognizability. Now, yeah. I will say the book never, like, body shames or no, anything like No, no, no. Talks about her cute curves and all. I, what, one thing I did not appreciate is that she's evidently gained enough weight to be unrecognizable, but yet it makes the, the point of saying when she gets naked that she's got a trim little waist. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, y'all didn't have to do that, all right? Y'all were doing so good. Yeah. But then, okay, so he, the one thing I did not like about him, besides him being dumb as a bag of hair is that um he does talk about other people's food see now for me what i felt like that was more was more like like i said new york city like california like it was more about california lifestyle like i mean it's not great i don't love it but it didn't i never came to me as him being like um i want you to drop a few pounds oh no he didn't say that but uh, it was always like quote unquote wellness but like the the one the one time that it really bothered me is that like they have sex and then the next morning they go down to the one restaurant oh yeah um and she orders like like a bunch of pancakes with whipped cream and stuff and he's like are you sure and then uh, you know she starts to get mad but then he's like she realizes oh he just cares about me well i do think too like i did not like that well i think also like a lot of that was like a really interesting way to show like how we internalize some of that stuff like i'm not again it's not great but i think a lot of it was her own 
yeah stuff she had a lot it. of stuff wrapped up in and all i of think like stuff. once like, i feel like he's the dude that once he realizes like what all like she went through would never bring it up again you know well, but you just shouldn't talk about anybody well no but i just, just like it doesn't you know like again i liked him a lot he was one of the better dudes like again he yeah, drops, yeah he's fine he drops the l-bomb first and you know is like willing to walk away from everything for her no, I liked him in general. I just like that. Just a little like you don't talk about people's food in any except to say that looks delicious. That's the only time you should make a comment on somebody else's food. Unless it's your 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 teen child. Oh, well, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you have to tell them like, no, you can't have 5,000 things of sugar. Yes. Well, that's different. You're responsible for her, but she's a grown up. Uh, not. Yeah. Two different cheese. But yes. Um, would you talk shit with or about the heroin? She oh, I loved her. Great. She's great. She was so self-aware and funny. And I mean, I think it was really great because you got like a like this book, you know, she's more than just like a head of hair. Yeah. Like, you know, talking about kind of her struggles and like that. She's so great. And she's again, but she's also funny and kind and doesn't take any shit. Yeah, I liked her quite a bit. I and and again, high praise for me because usually this kind of thing. Boy, there's a cute little town and there's yeah. like, I hate that shit. But no, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. All right. Back to Elda Bitch. There's actually a lot of great um, female. Yeah. Of all there. different ages. Like yeah. one of her best friends is an older, like a woman that I'm presuming is older because she's a widower. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of her best friends. And there's like ladies in the town. And aside from like <laughs> the bald cousin just tearing hell on 17 <laughs> that we never like meet. She's got so many hermit crabs by now. She just collected like. All- <laughs> but other than that, there's like a lot of really great female characters. And yeah. like like Sarah was talking about a minute ago with the food thing. When he says all that, there's a waitress. Oh, yeah. Who's that like, like puts him in his me? place. And, you know, you know, and he's like, well, I'll have like the oatmeal and she's like you gotta have this and you gotta have that and you know you got some meat on your bones you're gonna eat it and be happy yeah right yeah. T- say something when i try to eat a chocolate chip waffle motherfucker i dare you <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get with that um when it comes to consent is this book more robin thick or marvin gay i mean aside from him being like oh uh, what do i do i'm gonna bang you like yeah. it's very very consensual um yeah, and, like, and they talk about um, so uh, about protection, and all they have oh my is God, like, like these joke, these novelty condoms. Yeah, and uh, so like which is so like, which flavor do you want now? You know, like, yeah, it was like, it's funny, like it makes yes. sense, like you know, like really funny cool and, and talking about safe sex, kind of yes, fun. I'm very good because I mean, like sometimes they'll say, "Do you have protection?" Or you know, they'll they'll, they'll be responsible in these books, but they kind of don't talk about, I guess, the mechanics yeah, as much. So yeah, yeah, it was great. It, like you know, sex should be funny. Yeah. So. How badly are you judging your mom off reading this book? Oh, none at all. This one's great. No, it's so good. It's so fun. Would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's a weird thing because, like, this is one of those where we don't talk about people's race, but I do feel like... I don't think she'd be in a movie where the assumption was she got fat. Yeah, no. I mean, that's not her fault or anything. I mean, you know, we, yeah. when we, we're never actually talking about Scarlett Johansson. But we did get, like, book. a good cross-section of the town and, like... You know, one of the mechanics that Jake is all judgy about, you know, he's like, I don't know if I can trust him to touch my car. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's like, well, you know, he's got like a engineering degree from Georgia Tech. Yeah. He just does this for fun. (laughs) Like, you know, I think they do a good job of like. Like, like subverting his expectations of what a small town in South Carolina is like, which is probably entirely incorrect because now he was right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to start with he he, he was entirely right like yeah. no don't leave your portion yeah don't leave your portion <laughs> no don't don't, don't, don't do that <laughs> but yeah it is of course like you know which is a uh, look in south carolina on the coast either um this this town doesn't exist because this town would either be 100 percent rich white tourists um and you know uh all the service workers would be yeah. people of color or it would not be there yeah. <laughs> or be across the intracoastal which is the water he saw all right yeah uh, and it would be where all the people live who exactly. like go and do the laundry for the rich white tourists yeah that's that's what south carolina is really like on the coast uh you're not leaving your house looking like that there's not a ton of we don't get an outfit she's that. always just in like jeans and a she's always in like a little i think she might wear some coveralls as a tow truck yeah i think so yeah which you know do they have her name on them because they have an oh but her name says dixie mm. yeah oh uh, well you don't want you don't want oh would yeah. your okay would your 12 year old self have dog-eared any page the sex in this was hot this is one of our few blowjob books too. yeah and it talks about his penis a lot like like yes. not just like his 
his maleness or his that like whatever is like is a junk. yeah yeah she's like got her hands on that and he's like oh yeah. yes it's like it's very it was good yeah it was yeah very this is the best sex Sl- we've had in a while in slot a, a slot b we know where the tabs are all yeah the things. yeah yeah I, you know a love swap will do that for you i will love swap will get you we'll get it we'll done get it going yeah what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire Oh, God, one of those awful Dumplin' scupper knots. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> those fucking wines you get in North Carolina that are so sweet you had to put, like, ice in them. Yeah. Yeah, so it's scupper knot or muscadine. Muscadine or... wine. Like, that tea Ugh. is so great. It's so disgusting. I mean, if you put, like, some, like, soda water or something in it. A lot of, like, a lot oh. of it. It's so sweet. It's like we tried to get in the wine game, but it was like, well, this is all we could give you. Is this yeah, because, fucking... I mean, you can't grow fucking wine in goddamn no. Carolinas, which is not a thing, by the way. Nobody says Carolinas. People no. from, like, the Piedmont, maybe, because there's such a crossover. Yeah, maybe. But generally speaking, we care very much which Carolina you're talking about. Charlotte. So, should a person in the 21st century read this book? Yes, this book is great. It's so fun. I enjoyed yeah. this one. I know. I, it was a complete, like, I wasn't even going to stop. I was just, like, minding my own business putting um, shitty books into yeah. a little free library. No, it was a good. And I was like, what is that? That should, uh, And I thought, surely it's not old enough for us. And it was. And I, I love took it. it. And it's great. I yes. love it. Thank you, whatever old lady put that in the little free library in Melrose Heights. Heart of Dixie by Tammy Ho. All right. So we will see you next time. Hope everybody is enjoying their summer. Stay away from monkey fever, monkey pox. You know where you can get that? Monkey Island. <laughs> get it from Monkey Island. Um, <laughs> As always, you can like and follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at BTipplers, Instagram, Bodice Tipplers. Um, if you want to throw a couple bucks our way, it's patreon.com slash Bodice Tipplers. And you can find us on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs> Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts.